even like the ones who are big and famous, you think of multimillionaires, a lot of their money is going to Vince McMahon. And once they retire, they find that they have nothing. I mean, that's 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 been common for boxers. You yeah, know? Most yeah. of the heavyweight champions have died broke. It's, it's so many sad scenes in this movie. I mean, we see this guy, this wrestler, sleeping in his truck because he can't pay for rent for his trailer park. We uh, His trailer park. We see him going to the American Legion Hall to set up a card table and sell videotapes from his glory days and T-shirts and selling cheap Polaroids. And it's just so sad. And you feel so bad for him because Mickey Rourke in this movie is wonderful. I mean, he he pretty much is a guy that you want to root for so bad, even though you really don't see a good outcome for him. And I know I've been saying a lot of people deserve attention for some kind of award nomination or giving, as you say, Oscar caliber performances. But he really does do this in his movie. Oh, yeah. for me. Well, you'll probably see this year Best Supporting Actress nomination, uh, maybe for Marissa Tomei, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's a great scene with Evan Rachel Wood in here who plays his daughter. Yeah, she and, does have a great scene. And she really, this is one of those scenes you're like, oh my God, that just floors you. And it's a turning point for the whole film. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the linchpin for the third act. Mm -hmm. And uh, while she's one of them, like I said, she's playing his daughter who he wants nothing more than to reestablish contact with. And the problem is, although you like him, he's destroyed himself. Himself. He's destroying his body. He's destroyed his brain. I mean, he there's nothing for him to do, and he doesn't have enough intelligence to mend things with his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is so funny, man. Because uh, at first I was thinking, so many wrestling fans are gonna look at this movie in there. It's like finding out Santa Claus doesn't exist. They're gonna like be so disappointed. But then you look at scenes where they they talk about. Okay, we've seen them wrestle with tables, ladders, chairs. I would even go as far as not to even be shocked by barbed wire anymore. But goddamn, when they're shooting each other with staple guns, yeah, yeah. I'm that, like, that, shit. That, that is the scene where it just tips over, where it's like, Jesus and Christ. It's, there's a lot of self-mutilation involved. I'm yeah. like, well, damn, these guys should be receiving million-dollar checks. There are checks. so many painkillers all the time. They don't feel any of it. You know, the thing is, is something you said uh, needs to kind of be amended just a slight bit. Um, wrestling fans in particular, I know there's a, there a lot of jokes about the knuckle draggers uh, that are fans of wrestling, which there are plenty of. But most wrestling fans acknowledge the reality of what it is, that what they're watching, it's like us watching a movie. Well, they're watching their weekly movie, which is a weekly sporting event, and they buy into it as much as we buy into that Mickey Rourke really is the wrestler. It's we like, know that yeah. he's really a Mickey, he's really Mickey Rourke. And there's a lot of great documentaries out there about the stuff behind it, which this really draws from. When you watch this, if you've ever seen Beyond, Beyond the, the Mat, Mat yeah. or uh, uh, Bret Hart uh, Wrestling with Shadows, both of those films very much parallel this film. And uh, th there really is this ugly dark side to wrestling that wrestler wrestling fans acknowledge, but just try to pretend isn't there. Kind of like we try to pretend that there isn't some kind of meat grinder that these, you know, actresses are going through sure. that make them popular for four years. And then we make jokes about how they're playing strippers in movies. <laughs> so it's like the redneck soap opera then. It, no, in fact, <laughs> I've, I've always I've always called it soap operas for men because, I mean, really every week it's all about, well, you offended my honor and I'm going to kick your your ass next oh it's on at wrestlemania 27 oh, i know I, I think Corey had it right with soap opera for yeah, yeah. No, it i'm is. sorry i know no. lots of men who don't act like that no no so. no i, I remember <laughs> when back in, in college when i was into it i totally acknowledged that it was a soap opera yeah, yeah. We, we'd watch on the weekends and come in monday and talk about yeah did you see this and, and yeah yeah following just, that story it's just so funny they have one thing that they do in in wrestling a move that makes me laugh so hard they will they are sitting up there bleeding they got barbed wire all over their body they got razors and and, and staples sticking out of them and then somebody comes after them ready to put like a chair to their head or just wrestle them to the ground and they put up their hands like no 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 and it's like what what can you fear after this point where you sit up there bleeding and mutilated <laughs> but and no so well, the I, way they'll just stand there in the middle of the ring swaying when the guy's climbing up to the top of the thing like, yeah, just waiting really? <laughs> <laughs> so did uh mickey rook remind any Anybody else of Andrew Dice Clay in this whole thing? Yeah, a little bit, no. maybe. Okay. Just a little bit. All right. All right. He reminded me of every guy I've ever known from New Jersey. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, awesome. And they never tell you where this movie's placed, but does it not look like New Jersey? No, it, it, it is in Jersey because they have something called the Jersey Dollar Store in one scene or something. So. Oh, do they? Yeah, okay. so it is. you're right. It is Jersey. Be clear. So. It's a shithole wherever it, it is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. they are. Shithole it's USA. New <laughs> Jersey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there are some nice parts in New Jersey. When you're leaving, you can see the <laughs> sign that says you're it's, leaving New Jersey and you're, you're suffused with pleasure. It's... <laughs> No, it's it's the New York that appears in your rearview mirror. <laughs> oh That's man, you you were right. I mean, they picked some of the shittiest places places to film. There's a scene where Mickey Rourke is sort of on a pseudo first date 
with Marissa Tomei, where he's going to pick out something for his daughter. And they're standing out in the street talking. And I'm just looking as the wind is blowing cold. There's dirty snow everywhere. And I'm like, this scene is just every, any kind of romance in this scene is just ruined by what such a shithole they're standing in right now. And, but that's the whole point. And that's what's so great about this movie is that <laughs> it's so goddamn realistic mm-hmm. about what this yeah. thing is. And your heart just goes out to these people because they're very salt to the earth. They I, are yeah. not, they are not terrible people they've just gotten themselves into horrible situations yeah. which is that horrible situation is living in new, new jersey yes yeah and i have to give credit to darren aronofsky and the people that he cast as a lot of side characters there are a lot of people who i'm sure are just regular people some some wrestlers who wrestle professionally but not on like a high famous level uh, level and they just bring an element of realism to this there are moments when mickey rourke is talking to these wrestlers and I, I'm, I'm lost in the movie. I'm thinking, yeah, Mickey Rourke really is a down on his luck wrestler. And I believed him. I, I lost the fact that he was an actor. Okay. Here's the one unbelievable moment. Oh, he goes off on the guy who recognizes him when he's working at the meat counter, but he doesn't go off on that old white woman who keeps saying, no, that's too much potato salad. Oh, no, that's man. not enough. No, that's no, too much. Now, <laughs> this is the sign of somebody who has <laughs> this is this is the sign of somebody who hasn't worked retail in a long time because, because it's never the person who deserves it. It's yeah, the it's, next guy. It's the next guy. It's that guy that that thinks he's being cool and isn't being isn't, doesn't realize he's just pushed the wrong button, but, fucking button. And you're gonna blow up on him not because you're pissed at him because you're still pissed about the goddamn potato yeah. salad. And I really think it's a mistake to put a wrestler in customer service because that that little. <laughs> They, yeah, that that little white woman. I was expecting him to pick her up and zuplex her into a bowl of salad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it'd be cool if he just put it on a meat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, what else can I say about this movie? I I, I I love the direction. I love the realism to it. I give it a full price. You know, I I don't want to be the guy to criticize this, so I'm not going to. There's, I have no fault with this movie. I think the only fault I had was mine, which is that. I don't like wrestling and never have. And so this just didn't interest me as much as his other movies. While it's a great movie, my only real thing to say is I wish that Clint Manziel's score for it had been a little more pronounced like it's been in, in uh, Darren Aronofsky's other movies. That's always been mm-hmm. such a big part of what makes his movies great. Uh, but it's still a full price movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, up, up, up till now, I thought, you know, Mickey Rourke took all that abuse to his body, but it prepped him for the role of his life, which is Marv and Sin City. <laughs> but, uh, but now I go like, no, no, the, here is, <laughs> As the the Ram, uh, you know, R- Ram Jansky the Ram. This, this is Ram it. Jansky, the <laughs> Polish <laughs> wrestler. Uh, yeah, I, I give it full price. Uh, yeah, no, this is absolutely a full price movie. This is again one of the very best films of the year. This movie Ram jammed me hard into the oh, mat. Get out of here! Damn it! Oh, <laughs> How long no, have you no, been holding on to that? No, I haven't. No, no, I, I absolutely I adore this film. I think it is it is probably Aronofsky's best film. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, really, you thought I, better than Requiem for a well, Dream? I, absolutely, I can't love agree. Requiem for a Dream, but it's one of those films that you can never watch. Well, wait a minute. Are you yeah, saying it's better than Requiem? Or is yeah, that's as what you just good? said. Oh. No, no. I think still right now, Re- Requiem for a Dream is is better movie. But this is probably you know what I won't even try to pick between the two. This is equal for me. Wow. I, I I honestly I like it better because I think he he really. It's one of those films you can watch again, and even it's unlike Requiem. When you watch Requiem, you're just watching these people destroy themselves, and it puts you through an emotional roller coaster that you really don't want to go through. This is a film that puts you on a similar kind of roller coaster but doesn't hurt you as much and you're just in love with these characters I think that's only the because vi- it cuts off before it gets to the, the <laughs> final point I think that you've just said the very reason Requiem for Dreams a better film it has a much stronger emotional resonance than The Wrestler did for me and I think most people and I've seen it multiple times and I assure you it's worth going back yeah to I can say it like again. as much as you watch it the first time you go like wow I never want to watch it again if you were to watch it again, you would totally get back into it. Yeah, I was never depressed by that movie. That movie had such an energy that the wrestler didn't. Now, I'm not criticizing that this movie for it because this yeah. movie, that's why I'm really praising Darren Aronofsky because he's not somebody who's doing the same thing twice. He's If he continues along this track, he's becoming one of my favorite directors. Yeah, as much as I didn't like The Fountain, I appreciate that he stepped out and did something completely Definitely. different. Definitely. Yeah.